Our guest today, Yafi Kohn, is Vice President, Chief Sustainability Officer, and Group General Counsel at the Travelers Companies in New York City. Yafi, before that, worked at a pair of law firms, and she's one of those people when I first met, you, I immediately knew, like, this person is going somewhere. She's a very special person, and she's helped travelers do some very special things in the ENS space. I'm Brock Romanek, today on Zippy Point. So is engagement a year-round thing, or is there a rhythm to it like the proxy season for these sustainability reports, the ENS reports? So let me take a step back for a second and tell you about our approach to engagement first, and then I'll get to your specific question. We've been taking an integrated approach to engagement, whereby our head of investor relations, our corporate secretary and I, have been sending out joint invitations to our large investors to engage with us on a broad variety of topics, corporate governance and executive comp practices, our approach to sustainability and our environmental and social initiatives, and our recent financial performance. And then on the invite, we include all of our collective contacts at the institutional investor and specifically indicate in the invitation that they should feel free to share that invitation with any one of their colleagues, whether it's an ESG research analyst, investment analyst, portfolio managers, proxy voting teams, et cetera. Um, and so because the head of IR, our corporate secretary and I have been doing these joint engagements, the rhythm of our engagements on ESG is actually the same rhythm as our corporate governance engagements. So like most companies, um, we have our off-season engagements um, around this time of year in the fall of winter, fall and winter, and separately, of course, depending on what the proxy season brings, I may or may not be involved in investor engagements at that time. So it sounds like you do engage with institutional investors. That makes sense. But what about proxy advisors, other stakeholders, or, or even your employees? So we actually engage with all of the above. Um, obviously, like you said, a substantial portion of institutional investors, uh, of travelers. We do engage with the two major proxy advisors. Um, and there are also other stakeholders we engage with, like environmental or social activist groups who you might imagine would contact a company like Travelers. So I also speak with various groups of employees. I've been spreading the word internally about our approach to sustainability and our ESG-related efforts, and I always invite employees to share their thoughts and their ideas with me. And when I speak to employees, I like to highlight the fact that because sustainability is integrated within our business strategy and our day-to-day -day operations, the ESG-oriented initiatives that we talk about in our sustainability reporting and that our employees are so proud of actually originated from ideas of employees in every part of the organization, from personal insurance to claim to HR, and the list goes on. So I always encourage employees to continue that conversation with me to reach out if they have any ideas or suggestions, whether with respect to a particular initiative or our sustainability reporting generally. And I'll also mention that we do have a management level ESG committee at Travelers, which is a multidisciplinary committee of senior company executives that meets at least quarterly. And that's the committee that drives the prioritization and the management of sustainability issues at Travelers because we have people from so many disciplines on that committee. So think accounting, finance, risk, uh, underwriting, legal, HR, et cetera. I actually find those meetings to be extremely valuable in soliciting input, brainstorming ideas, um, discussing potential approaches to important developments. Um, and I also have quarterly meetings with senior members of our enterprise risk management team to ensure that we are aligned with respect to the risks that we're thinking about at Travelers. So all of what I've described is what I do on a regular basis, but I have plenty of ad hoc touch points, um, both, both with internal and external stakeholders. So on occasion, there might be an ESG related inquiry that comes in from a customer or from a regulator. So I would be involved in that kind of thing. Um, and internally, I often find myself in discussions with our chief accounting officer, our chief underwriting officer, our chief risk officer, chief diversity and inclusion officer, et cetera. Yeah, I've talked to a number of companies that are weaving ENS issues into their business strategy. And the benefit you get from employees that, that buy in with you is amazing that 
you get a more collegial collaborative and it just boosts morale in a way that perhaps is an unintended consequence of, of, of taking that action. And it's a reason people want to work there and want to come work for you. I think that's absolutely right. And that's one of the many reasons that we decided to enhance our sustainability reporting. So do you typically share a draft of your report with any of these stakeholders, you know, particularly like an institutional investor that really holds this topic near and dear to their heart? So internally, um, we do share drafts. Uh, we do have a formal process in place with respect to reviewing advanced drafts of our sustainability SASB and TCFD reports, because we do have standalone SASB and TCFD reports as well. That process does include a review by our ESG committee, which I mentioned just now, our disclosure committee and our legal and finance departments in addition to the relevant internal subject matter experts. But we actually do not share drafts externally before publication, just like we wouldn't share any other draft disclosure document with an external audience. And, and that's because we ultimately view our reports as disclosure documents. They describe our approach to sustainability and to specific issues that are of relevance to travelers. And they're really not, um, they're really not meant for folks outside the company to look at before they're ready, right? They're, they're meant for our investors and our other stakeholders to really gain a good understanding of how Travelers creates value uh, in the broadest sense. So just like any other draft disclosure document, once we have everyone's internal input, once we go through our process internally of making sure that everything is accurate and complete, that's when we make our disclosures public. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. What about obtaining feedback by your report after it is made publicly available? How do you do that? One of the primary ways we do that is through the investor engagement process that I mentioned earlier. Our first comprehensive sustainability website went up in the spring of 2019. And of course, at that time, we issued a press release. And we also sent a link uh, to our reporting to the various investors that we consulted with before, um, the, before we had developed our reporting approach. And so at that time, we did get some initial feedback. But throughout the fall of 2019 and the early winter this year, we did engage with about 40% of our investor base to get a lot of that feedback that you were talking about. We asked many questions around what they thought about our sustainability reporting. And we are actually doing the same thing this year with respect to our updated reports. We were talking about the proxy advisory firms just before. We did ask the proxy advisory firms for their thought, thoughts as well. We also asked our proxy solicitation firm for their candid feedback. And we also have really good relationships with um, the credit rating agencies. And we've asked them for their views on our reporting as well. And I just wanted to circle back to our conversation about employees. Um, I mentioned that I often speak with employees. And when I do that, I typically ask them whether they have ideas for how to further enhance our sustainability reporting. And I tell them to please be in touch with me throughout the year if they have suggestions as to how to make it better. And, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that when I work on our sustainability reporting, I am literally working with over 100 internal subject matter experts at Travelers. And throughout that process, I make it clear that this is the quintessential team effort. And I very much encourage them to share their opinions and suggestions as to how to make our reporting even better. And, and finally, I should mention that for anyone that we didn't proactively reach out to, we do include a line on our sustainability site in the about our sustainability reporting section of the site indicating that we appreciate all feedback on our sustainability reporting and that anyone who has comments or questions should email us and we provide an email address that I actually monitor regularly. That's so smart, I think, to make it a team effort because, you know, you, you only get better if you're working in a team and getting feedback from others my whole career, particularly then I've been, you know, sort of in the center of this community is people email and please email, comment below if you think I can make these videos better, but you can only get better with feedback. I, and I do take everything, every comment seriously you think about it, might not agree with it, but, you know, if someone made the comment, then they think a different way and I don't think that way. And, and they definitely, everyone else might think the way they do and not like I do. Yeah, it's, it's totally agree. Human. 
So there's uh, a number of other videos with Yafid. I'll link to those or beneath this video. Thanks very much, Yafid. Mm -hmm.